Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're gonna be doing, not a full face, but like 90% face of first impressions. I'm gonna be testing out a whole bunch of stuff. Most of it is stuff I picked up recently at Ulta. Couple items I didn't, but we'll get into that a little bit later. If you wanna see me test out, I believe it's 11 new products. Make sure to keep on watching and please don't forget to subscribe because I do upload three times a week. And that is the best way to stay up to date on all the fun stuff I'm posting. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. So the skin is already primed, my eyes are primed, and my brows are done, just because I don't have any new things for that today. For foundation, I'm going to be trying out the Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation. Normally, you guys know I'm not about the radiance. However, it does claim to be 15-hour wear. Not bad for oily skin. Like, I did mattify my T-zone already, and I will be setting it with powder. But I've been a little bit less focused on being super matte lately. If my oils are controlled, and I'm a little glowy, that's okay. I don't like luminous when it's gonna make me look shiny. And I'm gonna be taking that on the Real Techniques Face and Body Sponge. This is wet. This is a wet beauty blender. That's the size comparison. Like, I feel like this is going to work so quickly. So I'm really excited to try this out. Everybody and their mother has been using this lately. So I kind of felt like I needed to do it too. So I am going to take one pump of this And I'm going to dot that around the face and blend it out. I will happily add more and build it up if I need to, but especially with like radiant foundation, actually I am gonna take another half pump, this is not enough. Um, but with new foundations, I do wanna make sure that I'm taking the right amount and not going in too much, cause that will actually make it perform worse. And on my face and body sponge, this is blending out really quickly. <laughs> So I definitely lost some to the brush, so I am gonna take it on my finger this time instead, just to make sure that coverage does not get lost on the face. Cause even though I did take what I'm gonna call two pumps, definitely was not two pumps worth of foundation when I see what's all stuck inside the brush I used. So there is definitely a glow to the skin. I know you guys can see that cause I see it in the monitor. I'm not, mad at it. It depends on whether or not I'm also going to get shiny. So to start, it did apply very well. I definitely got a solid medium coverage out of it. I have been going a little lighter on the skin lately, so I'm not going to be building it up all the way to full coverage. I want to see kind of how it sits like this. For concealer, I did pick up the Makeup Revolution Fast Base Concealer Lightweight Buildable Coverage. To be honest, the only reason I picked this up is it looked like the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Eraser Wand, so I really wanted to try that. I do, like, I don't hate these, like, twist-up applicators. I mean, as you guys know, I did love and use the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind for a while there. But that first use, you're always, like, pumping so much, and then... How long does it take to actually get product out? There we go. All right, now we have some. Okay, so this is definitely a little thicker than the Maybelline and definitely thicker than the Charlotte Tilbury, but I'm not mad at that because if it blends well and it wears nicely, I'm not gonna have any issues. I like that the applicator is a much smaller sponge applicator. That's the one issue I had with the Maybelline one is I felt that that applicator was huge, all things considered. And I'm gonna go onto the pointy side of this giant sponge and blend out the under eye. That was super easy and that looks really nice. Now I don't know if it's gonna wear as nicely as it's blending out but all right, I'm gonna, one thing, first downside to this, I'm gonna go back to my beauty blender because it's a little bit too big for my under eye. And I'm sure it's gonna be too big for the nose too. That blended out nicely. The under eyes look very nice. It's definitely not like a super matte finish. I'm gonna take a tiny bit more down the nose because this, it looked like it was going to be thick, and it definitely looked like it was going to be very cakey full coverage, but honestly, it blended out quite nicely to the point where I would call it like 
definitely lightweight like it says and not a whole lot of coverage to where it's going to be overwhelming so if you're more into like that natural beauty soft focus this is probably going to be good what i will say is when it first hit the skin it did not burn burn is a bad word but it was like a little tingly i don't expect the same type of feel application as i would with something a little bit more high end however all things considered i think that applied very nicely powder is probably one of the top two items i was the most excited to play with today this is the beauty bakery better not bitter flower setting powder i got the shade translucent it does say on you this could be applied two ways using a brush to get a light dust on the entire face for a full matte look or with gentle pressure with a beauty sponge to absorb excessive oils in the t-zone i'm going to be doing both today i think the fact that this stuff looks like little ingredients is so cute Oh, this is beautiful. I have seen this all over social media. People rave about it, and I'm excited to see what the hype is all about. Right off the bat, I could tell you this is one of the softest powders I think I've ever used. Um, I'm going to just quickly blend out the under eye just to make sure we don't have any creases. And then using a sponge, I'm going to press that into the areas I typically like to bake. And then going into a light fluffy brush, I'm going to take a little bit more of that powder. And like it says, I'm going to lightly dust that everywhere else. So I'm going to give this like a minute or two to bake down and then I'll be right back. Beautiful. So time to just sweep off this excess powder. I will say, like I said before, this is one of, if not the softest setting powders I think I have ever touched, which I think is going to be very helpful and part of the reason that it's so good at clinging to oils like it says because like powder dusts off the skin but when it's really fine you could end up having a little residual on the skin and it'll sink a little bit more into the skin which will really help to kind of control the oils throughout the day before i go into anything else i am gonna say i'm gonna pull my mirror in a little closer that nothing is sitting on top of the skin everything definitely feels like it's sunk into the skin which i do like the base looks very flawless. I'm enjoying the way everything is turning out so far. The one thing I will say is that that powder definitely took down most of the sheen, but you still see a little bit in there. So I think that even though it is a matte powder, it didn't take away all the luminosity of the foundation. So if you do have like an oily T-zone and you're looking for that radiant look, you can definitely set it down with a little bit of powder and still get that luminosity. So the next product, Going along the same lines as the Makeup Revolution Concealer, which reminded me of the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Eraser Concealer, I picked up the Prime and Fine Professional Contour Palette from Catrice because this reminded me exactly of the Sculpting Glow palettes from um, Charlotte Tilbury as well, which I thought was really cool. The shade is called Ashy Radiance, which looks super cool toned and great for fairer skin like pasty girls like me. <laughs> so I'm going to grab my contouring brush and I'm going to, I haven't even swatched this yet. I'm going to take a tiny bit on my brush and I'm going to pray that this doesn't look muddy and it's not too pigmented. Oh, not bad at all. That is what I'm going to say is the one issue I find with drugstore contour powders. Normally, like with eyeshadows and stuff, the issue with affordable is that there's not enough pigment in it and everything kind of blends to nothingness. With contour powders, I feel like it's the opposite. I feel like they are too pigmented, so when you try and blend them out, they get muddy, they get gross, and they all around just aren't quite as good as the more high-end ones. This, I think, is giving a nice amount of color. I think that it is giving me that contoured effect, and I don't think that it is too overly pigmented, that it's looking muddy. So I will say that on the face it looks nice. I'm loving the way that this tone contoured the nose. It's just cool enough that it doesn't look overly like bronzy, but it really does refine everything quite nicely. I will say that I wish there was a little more pigment, like meat in the middle. I think this overcorrected a little too much, but I'm not unhappy with it. I'm gonna go quickly throw on bronzer and blush off camera because I don't have one that I'm trying out today, and I will be right back. All right, now that this is on, I will say that it definitely translated a little bit warmer on the skin. I'm not mad at it, but just something to think about. 
I'm going to then go into the highlighting shade of the contour palette, which is definitely a shimmery highlight, not like an under eye brightening powder. And let's see how that works on the cheekbone. Oh, that's actually really pretty. I know that sounds surprising and like I wasn't expecting it to be pretty, but I don't think I have found many highlighters from the drugstore where I don't need to layer something else over them and that they work really well on their own. It does have almost like this pink shift to it, so it is a little on the pinky side. If you don't like that, you won't enjoy this color, which I do find it weird that the cool toned contour shade is paired with a pinky iridescent e highlight shade, but I'm not mad at it as an everyday. I don't know if you guys will love it, but that's actually quite nice. And now we are ready for eyeshadow. Today I'm going to be trying out the Wet n Wild Comfort Zone palette. I have not tried Wet n Wild formulated eyeshadows in such a long time. More importantly, I do know that they did revolutionize their formula and change everything over, and all these cute little jewel tones were really speaking to me, so I figured I'd try it out. Looking at the Inspire looks that they have on the back, I'm probably going to do neither of those, but Nice to know that if you needed that, they do have like a paint by numbers kind of thing. I'm going to start by taking the transition shade, and these are numbered, so I'm just going to have to point to which shade I'm using, and I'm going to use that to start defining the crease. One tap in, there's definitely some kick up in the pan. I don't know if you can see, but that did fall into the next shade. So I am going to make sure to use it horizontally, and I'm going to buff, buff that into the crease. Right off the bat, the pigment is there. Like you guys can clearly see, I did not dump in, dunk in a second time, and that definitely deposited quite a bit of color. It blended nicely. This doesn't feel overpowering. This isn't dusty. It's not skipping. It's not patchy. I am very impressed, especially for like a $4 eyeshadow palette from the drugstore. Now, the one thing I will say is that when you're formulating eyeshadows, Mattes are a lot harder to get right than satins and um, metallics. I have noticed that in a lot of drugstore palettes I've had, the metallics are really good, but it's the mattes that really give you trouble. With this, the matte is really performing a lot nicer than even I expected it to. Next, I'm going to take the shade Transition down here, which is a little bit of more like a warm burgundy, and I'm going to use that to define the outer portion of the eye. I do like that they tell you what the transition colors in here are for people who are beginning and need that assistance. However, what I will say is there's only two mattes in the whole palette. It's the top and the bottom. The rest are all a blend of satins and metallics, which I like to go in with a few more mattes than that, but when they blend like this and they really do layer well, I find that I can get away with less mattes because I don't need to like blend five browns into each other. They will blend nicely on their own. Now this is the point where I have so many options, I don't know what I want to do. I really think I want to go in with these like greens. So I'm going to take a little bit of this shade down here, which is almost like an olive green with a little bit of like black and there's some sparkle in there. And I'm going to use this to just deepen up and smoke out the outer portion a little bit more. Then on a smaller blending brush, I'm gonna go back into that first transition shade, and I'm just going to blend out those edges. I am really surprised at how well these are blending. So I'm gonna take a little bit more of that really dark shade, and I'm going to very lightly feather that onto the lid, just because the green that I wanna use is very light, and I do want a little bit, like you see how now this has like a little bit of a gray base? I do want to make sure that I have that same effect underneath the green just to darken it a bit. And that's something you can always do. You can layer your shadows in a way that you can kind of change the shade underneath. Now I'm going to go into the bold green shade and I'm going to load up my brush. I am going to spray it with a little bit of Fix Plus. Now it's really pretty and I like the way it looks, but I am going to say that I'm definitely having to build up the pigment in the green shade a whole lot more than I did with any of the other shades. I do get that I want it to be really green and foiled and pack a punch, but 
I don't know, I feel like a matte shade being what better formulated than a metallic shade is kind of unheard of. I'm gonna grab a little more of that really dark shade and I'm just going to feather that into the green just so that we have a nice smooth blend. All right, the one thing I'm gonna try now is I'm going to take a little on my finger and see if I can amp up that shine a little more. Yeah, definitely goes on a little bit smoother and you definitely get a little more of that metallic finish when you take it with your fingertips as opposed to a brush. I am gonna add a touch more of that first transition shade because when I do like a green like this I love when you really can see a contrasting crease color and I love that like orange peeking through so I definitely want to just intensify that a bit so you really get that contrast between the cool toned lid and that really warm crease next I'm going to take this highlight shade right here and I'm going to lightly dust that on the brow bone I'm gonna quickly throw on a black liner in the waterline and I'll be right back. So on a pencil brush, I'm gonna start by taking that really dark greenish black one more time. And I'm going to lightly smoke that on the waterline. Then on a fluffier brush, I'm gonna go into the transition shade one more time. And just like we did on top, I'm gonna to kind of frame the lower lash line. Now that we've added that definition and that smokiness, I'm gonna go back into that green shade. And this is gonna be where this gets a little bit interesting. I'm hoping it works out. I'm going to feather that around the inner corner and into the bottom part of the lower lash line. Now on my M213, me and this brush have been through a lot lately. I'm gonna link a video up here where I had to do a full face using random brushes and I had to use this to blend out my under eye concealer. It was not fun, but I think I'm at the point where I can use this again. I'm gonna go into the highlighty shade that I used on the brow bone, and I'm gonna layer that over the green on the inner corner. And then to amp it up a little bit more, I'm gonna go back into the highlighter from that Catrice Duo, and I'm going to see if we can get that a little bit more, yeah, a little bit more blinding. Now, the next product isn't exactly a first impressions. I have used it before, but it was so long ago and I wasn't a fan, I figured it was time to give it a second chance. This is the Better Than Sex Mascara from Too Faced. BoxyCharm recently sent this over because it is going to be an upcoming product in the February box. They did send it to me to share with you guys that it is coming as a nice little sneak peek. And brand new, haven't used it in literally years but I figured if there was ever a time to give it a second chance, now would be it. I actually like the way that looks. Are you guys ready for the preachy Brett on his soapbox moment of the video? The last time I tried this product, it was before I was using the Grande Lash Serum and I had like zero lashes and it got really clumpy and my lashes looked like crap. Today, I actually really like the way that this is looking. I don't think I like it as much as my roller lash, but I'll have to see how it wears and remember if that's why I didn't like it, but I'm not hating the way it put on, which, and again, here's where it's the soapbox moment. This is why you need to revisit products because you change, your preferences change, your lashes change, and next thing you know, you could be totally in love with a product that you hated forever. So I'm not mad at that. I'm going to definitely be trying this out a lot more. For lashes today, I did pick up the Vegas Ney and Eyelore Shining Star Lashes. These look massive, like I'm gonna have to trim a lot off of them, but I am pretty bougie with my lashes, like House of Lashes, Lily Lashes, New Bounceum, like I don't really wear affordable lashes all that often, so I'm excited to see how these wear. They definitely, <laughs> the band is a little rigid, they feel a little plasticky, and this is definitely way too big for my eye. So I'm just going to quickly trim these and throw them on. And I'll be right back to let you know what I think. Uh, I am going to link a video up here of like basic lash applications. So if you do have any questions, you can totally watch the video. Or sound off down below if you want any additional information. So full disclosure, this was the product as I pulled it out of the box and as I went to apply it that I was confident I was going to hate. Now that they're on, I'm not... 
not quite as angry at it as I thought I would be. I definitely, like, I don't love how thick the lash band is. I definitely feel like I can feel it on my lashes, which I normally, like, you throw on your lashes and you don't really feel them anymore. You get desensitized to that. I definitely still know that these are on specifically on my left eye, plus that band is so thick that it looks like I have liner on, which if you like doing a liner look, that's great. I don't have a lot of lid space as it is, so I feel like this is taking up a little more than I probably should have had taken up by a lash band. So two more items left. The first one is going to be the new Color Sensational Gloss Finish Lipsticks from Maybelline. I got the shade Spicy Mauve because this is not a shade I typically would wear. It, supposedly, is high shine, high pigment, and it's going to look beautiful. So I am I, going to grab my MAC Lip Liner in Spice and quickly line the lips. That has a really pretty shine to it. I definitely don't think I like it with the eye. The lip color is a little bit out of whack, but for the sake of the video, I'm not gonna change it out because I really like the formula. And the last thing, as you guys know, I have loved the Milani Make It Last setting spray for a very long time. I finished it a couple months ago and never replaced it. And when I was walking around Ulta yesterday, I did notice the Milani Make It Last Matte setting spray, which is a 16 hour wear matte charcoal setting spray. So I always like to, there we go. So that is, Definitely not the same mister it used to have. I remember the mist being really like effortless and this is definitely a little bit less. So I'm gonna hold it like pretty far away and set down the face. Okay, I do not like the mister on this. This is not the same mister that I remember and love from my original Milani Make It Last setting spray, but the formula, I like it. it I mean, it went on nicely. We're gonna see if it actually holds up and reduces the shine and I will have to get back to you and let you guys know. I'm not gonna be doing a full wear test today, but I will leave any updates on how things wore and how I liked them in the description box. And yeah, let's take a look. Okay, I found the issue. I did not shake first. So it does say shake first. So once you shake it, it definitely gives you a much finer mist. And that is the finished look. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick rundown and update on the product. First, the foundation. I'm definitely feeling nice and luminous and glowy, but at this point, it's taken me about an hour to film this video. My T-zone is not super oily. Everything still looks very nicely. Again, I will update you guys in the description box how it wore, but I like it. The concealer, it's not creasing. It's got a lot of nice coverage on the under eye. I think I'm really gonna be a fan of this and I will have to play around with it more. Beauty Bakery Flower Powder, hands down the winner of this video, like this product. I am so excited to continue using it. You will be seeing a lot more of this. Catrice Prime and Fine Highlight and Contour Powder. It was good, nothing to write home about. Like if you're looking for an affordable contour palette with some highlight in it, this will work very nicely for you, but I mean, it's a contour powder. Eyeshadows, super impressed. I do wish the green was a little bit more bold, but all things considered, I'm not hating how it's wearing and how it's looking. I do like it. The mascara, I know that I have lashes on on top of it, but I really like the way it applied and it doesn't feel hard or crusty under my lashes, so that is very good. The lash itself, I'm still hyper aware that they're here, which I normally am not. It's a little bit fake and plasticky feeling, but the look is nice, the effect is there. So if you are looking for lashes on a budget and you don't have Lily Lashes budget available, these are probably gonna work pretty well for you. I did have to trim quite a bit off because they are very long. So if you find that lashes tend to be too small for your eyes, these ones are not gonna be too small. The lip, beautiful. Don't think it goes with this look, but I still really do enjoy the way that it is wearing and the way that it's looking. It's not sticky, but it still looks like I have a gloss on, so I do like that. And the setting spray, make sure you shake it because if you don't, it's gonna spit out at you and you're not gonna be a fan. But if you do take the time to shake it first and then spray, it's gonna be a beautiful soft mist and it's a little less alcohol-y than the original. I know alcohol is a drying ingredient, which is good for matte, but I don't think that this feels quite as alcohol-y, even though there is definitely alcohol in here. 
Oh shoot, and the sponge. I did really like the way the sponge worked. I felt like it covered so much surface area and really blended everything out really quickly. Definitely gonna be playing with this a whole lot more too. So that is the finished video. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know which product you thought did the best on camera and any new products that you guys want me to try out because that's how I figure out what I wanna play with is based on your recommendations. So thanks again and I will see you guys next time. Bye.